little bit of a uh, an impromptu intro. <laughs> I was going to start with some clips of the cardio, but I was like, eh, whatever. I woke up kind of late anyway, so. Cardio done. I already took my little caffeine capsules, but I haven't eaten anything and I haven't taken my vitamins. So I just got back from my first class. So it's 1130. I haven't had Jack. I'm fucking starving. So I just put this whole packet of deli turkey meat under these four little sandwiches I'm making. I, I can't even say cooking up. I'm really just assembling things right now. But that's going to add up to... I'll just I'll add up all the macros at the end. So mustard and low-fat mayonnaise, those are the only other two ingredients. I wouldn't mind like some romaine lettuce, but I just don't have any, so whatever. Now, the mustard, there's no fucking calories in it. I could eat the whole thing. Uh, oh, now I'm thinking of people that just eat mustard. So, there's no calories in the mustard. And if there are, it's negligible. But in the mayonnaise, if you're not tracking this kind of shit, this will add up quick. So, zero at the scale, and then just do a nice little healthy dollop on each of these turkey sandwiches. So that 33 grams total. Serving is 15, so about two, maybe a little more. Eight grams of fat. All right, so I'll stack these together, put them in a little takeout box, but first let me add up all the macros. So, a, eight grams of fat from the mayonnaise. It says two of carbs, you know, one gram of carb per serving. So that's all plugged in. I just did the whole pack of this. So eight servings, eight more grams of fat, 16 more grams of carbs, and protein, 72 grams of protein. I'll, I'll trim it down a little. Because I'm only going to count dedicated protein sources. And I've been hearing a lot of flack about the quality of deli meats. Just because it's kind of everything ground up together. But I I still think this, this is going to contribute to... I'm fucking freaking out right now. going to contribute to some muscle maintenance. Like the amino acid array in this turkey is still way better than like, you know, a vegan protein powder. Or like a plant-based protein powder, you know. It, uh, it just doesn't have the same amount of all your leucines and I don't, I don't know all of them by name, nor have I even looked into it, but I, there's no need to, you know, right? Dedicated protein sources, meats, fish, dairy products, eggs, stuff like that. It's hitting the whole freaking, uh, I kind of forget how many amino acids there are that makes up a complete protein. But having all those together is what you freaking want. So that's why I don't count the protein from the, uh, the buns. Oh, yeah, crap, the buns. The buns are one gram of fat each, so that makes four. And then three grams of carbs each, so total that makes 12. And then it says seven grams of protein in each. Dude, that's fucking BS. Come on. I, I just don't count it. Whether or not that's... Uh, like, yeah, they, it has energy, but honestly, from my perspective, the the difference from, I don't know. I don't mess with it. That's how I go about it. You know, this isn't an instructional video. It's more so just a, just a documentary in a sense of just what I do. So I got, oh, check this out. This is pretty cool. So I've been just tediously taking out all my vitamins individually every day. So I took a I took a tip from my grandma, got the pill, uh, a little vitamin. What's the what's the word even for? Scheduler divider. Yeah, so just do it all at once. I I don't meal prep, but I guess I do. Do a multivitamin prep. So, if I sound a little bit, um, uh, let's just say frantic, it's because. Ooh, I've got a class in five minutes. I, I emailed her. I told her I was going to be late, but whatever. Mm. Ah. 
And then this is just a zero calorie electrolyte packets mixed into the water so I can make sure I stay nice and hydrated. So I guess you'll just have to imagine what it looks like when I eat these. I know they're going to be good, but I'll just eat these four in my next class. And then I've got a two hour gap before my next one or before the one after this one. So we just come back to the kitchen, make a little something else, have a little, have a little chat about it as well. All right, class two of three now done. So I just threw a freaking pound of ground beef into a pot, stirred it up on high heat until it was, you know, all brown, and then mixed in a package of microwavable cheddar cheese. No, no, no. Cheddar broccoli rice. So, total macros for this whole bowl, it's like 80 grams of protein. I think I, no, I think about 75 grams of protein. Oh, and then I poured in some hot sauce too. Some, uh, some buffalo. So I think it's, it was about, actually I can just pull it up. What am I even thinking about? 75 grams of protein. Uh, looks like we're on 20 grams of fat and then 65 grams of carbs. So once I eat this whole thing, that'll put me at 1370 for the day. Now, a whole pound of ground beef. I'm not going to eat that all at once. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to snack on this for a while. I've still got to finish some homework for my next class. So I'm going to sit here for a bit and then I'll probably just bring this with me. Scratch in it when I'm in my next class. So I don't really eat in, uh, like for the most part, especially when I'm dieting down, I'm not really eating dedicated meals. It's more so I'm just kind of eating throughout the day, you know, like if I'm going to prep something, I'll prep it in kind of a large batch, you know, the equivalent of a couple of meals and just kind of, you know, pull it out of the fridge, take a couple of bites when I'm hungry and put it back. So. This will probably be the last thing I eat over the course of the next couple hours. And then, I mean, at this point, we can just cut straight to the car talk for back and rear delts. Nothing else to discuss. Uh, let's get ready to go hit back and rear delts. So, basic plan for back. Honestly, just a bunch of rows, pull downs, and pullovers. I mean, what else? really is there if we're being honest i definitely don't want to do anything like without my chest supported i wouldn't want to be doing bent over barbell rows right now because i'm still feeling my glutes from the last leg day and that was ugh, that was two days ago so back first and then i'll we'll finish with rear delts eh, i don't know I, I don't really think I would get much out of doing rear delts first. For the most part, I think I want to train my, let's just say the muscle that I'm biasing, or the muscle I want to grow more first. Like if I were to do chest and tries, I want to do chest first and then tries. It gets a little bit weird because with legs, I do it backwards. I'll do hamstrings first and then quads, but that kind of serves a different purpose because when I do hamstrings first, they get a lot of blood flow on my knees. I just kind of feel better when I move on to, you know, leg extensions and presses and whatnot. But really nothing too tricky with back. I mean, I don't mess with any like low back focus days or like upper back focus days. I just kind of hit the whole thing. I mean, sometimes I'll have like a back day where it's mainly pull downs, like mainly lat focused. And then other days I'll have one where it's a little bit more row biased. I think just an even spread of both is probably fine. You know, you don't have to do a dedicated day for each. Because at the end of your, let's say you do a normal, you hit everything twice a week style split. If you do an upper back focus day and then a lower back focus day, you'll end up doing the same amount of work as the guy who did a just kind of whole back focus day twice. So probably nothing to really read into there. 
And the only the only other thing in terms of my back training that's a little bit controversial is, you know, I never deadlift. The most I ever the most I've ever deadlifted for a complete rep was uh, 405 in high school. Uh, I did a. It's what happened was the next week. This was so early in my training that a a back day was just like maxing out my deadlifts. How far we've come. Hmm. <sighs> I had 405, and then the next week, I went for 455. And I got it to my shins, but I couldn't finish the rep. And then I just never deadlifted again. So, I didn't get hurt or anything. I was just like, oh, this is stupid, whatever. And honestly, I still kind of have the same mentality about it. You know, I can kind of justify a little bit better now, like I'm about to. It's when you're doing deadlifts, you're working your glutes, your lower back a ton, your erectors... Your hamstrings are coming into play like crazy. Now, sure, you'll get some lack, some lack. You'll get some lat and some upper back, some trap development. I'm not gonna say you won't. People with big backs have been built, or people have built big backs by deadlifting. It's, undone, it's undeniable. But in a bodybuilding context, you know, I want to just hit my lats with you know as much energy as I can muster. So I'd rather not waste a ton of energy and get super gassed after. Let's say even just two sets of heavy deadlifts. Because sure, I'll stimulate my lats, but I will, uh... Oh my god. I'll also waste a ton of energy hitting my glutes and my hamstrings, which I don't want to do. You know, I'm not doing posterior chain day. I'm going to the gym to do a back day, so I only want to hit back. Right? That's why I'm using straps, too, so I don't have my forearms and biceps come into play at least not too much when I'm doing my pull downs or rows because again I want to just focus on my back lats, traps, rhomboids all sorts of shit in between so the only other thing I could kind of say is a tip is if you're not using lifting straps I would highly advise it you know everybody I know that you're probably thinking to yourself oh well you know I want to build my forearms if you want to build your forearms, you should hit your forearms directly. Right? Don't compromise your back training and your forearm training just because you want to multitask. That's uh, that's just my feeling on the matter, at least. So I'm fucking still yawning. I gotta slam the pre. Two scoops of bloodshot and a scoop of hostility. Fuck. I forgot to take my beta alanine. I've been adding beta alanine in to the pre. Uh, and it doesn't have, I'm pretty sure it doesn't have, uh, like, immediate effects. It's, you kind of build up, it's like, it's like creatine, you kind of build up a level of satiation of it, and then it kind of takes effect. So, I'm in the loading phase of the beta alanine this month, but I can just take it when I get back, and it'll still do its thing. So, enough chit-chat, let's, uh, let's just get started. Anyone who knows anything about photography, I'm sure they'd be a little perplexed. Got some nice warm natural light coming in from the side and then some cool ass fluorescence above me, but whatever. That's uh, it's totally unrelated to what we're doing here. So don't feel like you're limited by the stack. You know, this, this fucking cable is strong enough to handle a couple of extra plates slapped on the side. Now I'm not completely insane. I'm only gonna do a 45 and a 25, but as an opener, this will be a solid amount of weight. <clears throat> and I'm not particularly concerned with like getting a perfect contraction. I mean, what I'm really thinking about right now is, you know, do the reps with good range of motion, at least for the beginning when I'm strong, but really just load up my lats with as much tension as they can handle. I'm not gonna do this same weight again for the next set, I'll probably take the 25 off. Maybe I'll take the 45 off, right? I'm, I'm sufficiently warm, I wanna start heavy and work my way down as I get weaker, if you follow my logic. Okay. 
All right. Let's just do one more. No extra play of the side. So just as a little bit of a clarification, I don't mind getting to the point where I'm doing partials or I'm barely even fucking moving the handle. Because the only thing that's powering that little bit of movement is some scapular retraction with my lats. And it's a fucking pull down. What else am I trying to hit? So let's move on to a rowing machine. Contrarily executed compared to those pull downs. This is gonna, these reps I'm gonna do a lot more slow, controlled, really focused on hold and squeeze. Uh, and not only just because I wanna do different kinds of sets, like I like the, you know, throw the weight around style. And, you know, I like doing some slow squeeze burning style too. But sometimes the machine itself just kind of feels better to do in a specific way. Like preacher curls, I wanna do a bit slower, controlled, just sort of because. But dumbbell curls, I don't mind kind of ripping the weight up, especially when I'm strong in the beginning. So for whatever reason, for whatever set of circumstances, with this row, I'm trying to just go a little bit slower, get a real good hold and squeeze. Almost feel like I'm trying to pull my elbows and have them touch each other behind my back. And at least one or two sets of these will be perfect. Let's um, let's do something else. I'm not sure. So I'm not one for overcomplicating this stuff too much, but for some exercises, I will go out of my way to kind of assemble a movement. So basic plan here is kind of some, eh, I'd say reasonably upright rows. Because let's think about this, you know, a normal row or a normal row style, right? You're pulling straight away from your body. Like if this is your spine, you're pulling this way. But with this setup, I'm pulling a little bit more like upwards. So this is real upper back, trap, rhomboids, Terry's major, bias, whatever you want to say. Like kind of this stuff on top, you know. I don't really, I mean for me just specifically, my traps are kind of developed enough. Like I don't need much more thickness up here. I kind of want more mid back thickness. So I'm not gonna do straight up shrugs, but kind of an upper back bias row. I love it. And then one thing that's kind of cool, since these two handles are like, well, each hand's individually loaded, not only am I pulling, you know, towards my, I guess, center of mass in this direction, right? Since the handles kind of converge, my back also kind of has like a little bit of this motion. Like I'm pulling towards myself, but also my hands are coming closer inwards. So I just feel like it's kind of giving me a better squeeze at the top, but... And I'd say worth trying, potentially. Actually, no, definitely worth trying. Any movement is worth trying. Now, worth implementing into your routine. 
You got to see if it feels good for you. And then this movement kind of, for me, it asks to be done slowly with a solid squeeze. Let's do one more. Okay. Let's do one set of something. Lat bias, maybe pull downs, maybe pull overs, I'm not sure yet. Then we can check the pump. Okay, so final set. Reasonably light pull downs. Instead of the stack plus a 45 and a 25, I'll just do 200. Slow and controlled. Burn out and get a couple partials at the end, and then we can check out the pump. feel like a chump on my last set sometimes because I mean you know some movements it's just kind of easy for me to burn it out like I think it's just because I'm an ego lifter at heart but I feel better doing a set where I'm just manhandling like an insane amount of weight to failure rather than just a lightweight burning to failure I mean as long as I go hard on both I know I'm doing something right but that's just a little deep dive into my subconscious let's go check this shit out all right, this is probably as good of lighting as I'm going to find at this gym. So let's see what we're working with. That's my fucking, I got to say something else. I keep saying just, let's see what we're working with under the hood, under the whatever. Let's see how this pump is looking. Let's see how inflated the lats are, how thick the valley of my mid back is. I could go on for hours. Uh, might have to lose the tank. We'll see. We'll see. Typically for chest and back pumps, I'll take the tank off, just go totally shirtless, because, I mean, a cutoff is perfect for arms and shoulders. But if you really want to see your chest pump, I'm covering up 90% of my chest, and I'm covering up fucking at least 60% of my back. You know, I want to take a look at that stuff. Let's just get a lat spread in first, and then we can, then we can reveal further. Oh, Ooh. yeah, let's get this thing off. I don't even know why I wore it if I knew I was going to take it off before rear delts. <laughs> Must just be some kind of habit. Eh, I guess if I wear it now, then my real shirt won't be so wet for the drive home. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to back in terms of poses. So, you know, eight hard sets, and that's the pump we got from it. I feel pretty satisfied. So now all I gotta do is go um, spam eight sets of rear delts. All right, so I changed up my normal laying face pull setup just a touch. Uh, I guess it, it's kind of self-explanatory. But I don't love doing face pulls like standing. If I were to just stand here like this and do them, 
I feel like my body would be rocking back and forth. I'd have to like flex my abs to stabilize, and then I'm like, it's it's not cool at all, right? I want to form a stable structure so I can just flex my rear delts, hold this thing towards my eyes, and burn out. I let's just get four sets here. <clears throat> Yeah, perfect. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll do the last two that my normal way. Okay. Okay. Let's do some reverse pack deck. Four sets of reverse pack deck. Uh, moderate weight, and this time I'm not even kidding. Like, actually, a weight I can control. Just gonna go slow, squeeze, burn out. You know, I'm not. Rear delts are not a muscle for me where I have <laughs> even a little bit of an inkling of a desire to like destroy him with as much weight as possible. You know, for me, my shoulders just tend to get enough development just from, you know, burnout sets, basically. Like, I'm not trying to do side laterals with the hundreds, but if that's what you got to do to grow, that's what you got to do. You know, you got to figure the shit out for yourself. But four sets here, and then we can check the pump and cut to the car and then the next meal. I almost forgot this is, this is a full day of eating, too. Okay. Right, a little heavier. Check this pump out and get in the car. I've never gone right here before. The lighting is actually... It looks decent. Whatever. It's just for adults. I mean, obviously I'm hitting them as though I want to grow them. Same with any muscle. But to an extent, in today's lift, I'd say rear delts is more so of an accessory. And back was the primary focus. But that's just because, for me, shoulders are they're advanced relative to everything else. I'm just trying to maintain them. So the hair will be cut eventually, I know. Who cares, man? This is not a hairstyling YouTube channel. All right, we're here for bodybuilding, weight training. All right, anything else is second to that fact. Oh yeah, dude, fuck yeah. See, the rear del is fucking poking over the tricep. Dude, that's actually fucking sick. All right, let's try the other side, see if it's the same deal. Ooh. Yeah, exactly. This is what I'm going for. The lighting makes it a little hard to see, but I want this upper part to be extra round, right? Everybody's got a big front delt that's kind of poking over the side up here, but to have a real cool round looking shoulder, you need the back to be just as developed if not a pro, well, not overdeveloped. You don't want anything overdeveloped, but you get what I'm saying. So let's get a rear lat spread, double vine. Get, get out of here. Yeah. Mm. Okay. All right. Let's get in the freaking car. Good. Oh. All right, there we go. The camera's freaking bugging on me for a second. 
So back and rear delts complete. I can still kind of feel my calves, so I'm not gonna hit them. But whenever they're not sore, I feel like your calves deserve just a touch, just a little itty bitty touch stimulation, you know. Nothing crazy either. I'm not saying you gotta sit here and like absolutely obliterate them, but I mean, <laughs> I just know for a fact that you probably aren't hitting calves as much as you, as much as you should. And I'm inclined to believe that that goes, that statement holds true for the non-silent majority. I know a lot of you guys love talking about, hey, skip calves. Oh, calves are genetic, man. That may be. But, are you just, <laughs> you just going to say screw it and not even try? Come on, man, that is freaking foolish behavior. Absolutely foolish. So, I'm fucking starving right now. I stayed in the gym way too long just yapping it up. I'm still only at... Wait for this stupid simple macro tracker to load. 1,300 calories left, so 840. That means I've got 1,140 calories left to play with for the night. So, that's all good with me, man. That's perfect. You know, I want to go to bed full. I'd rather have more of my food closer to the end of the day than in the beginning. Because you're just asking for trouble if you get to like 6 o'clock and you only have 500 calories left for the night. I mean, I can almost guarantee the uninitiated lifter is just going to be like, ah, eh, screw it. Just start munching on some kind of treat. And I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I don't do that sometimes. You know, I've never done a cut where there was anything uh, really riding on it apart from just, you know, getting leaner. So it's not like a little bit of cheating is going to destroy you. But in order to actually lose body fat, you have to be on a week-to-week -week basis on average in a calorie deficit. Ah, this is some of the, the intro work I drink with some Silo 9 the hostile amino electrolyte mix there's a special little code in the bottom they're doing like a they're doing a little deal on them uh, but so it, yeah so per week right so let's say your calorie deficit your maintenance calories is 2500 you know you plug it into that online tracker uh, you find that value by plugging in like you go online you look up maintenance calorie calculator you plug in your height your weight your energy level, which is basically like how often are you exercising, your age, your gender, everything like that, and it'll pump out a number. Now that number isn't going to be, you know, 100% accurate, but it can be a pretty good ballpark. The best method for finding your actual maintenance calories is tracking everything you eat, just, you know, eating when you're hungry. Like actually weighing out all the food that you eat when you're hungry for it, right? weighing yourself every morning and let's say you stay the same weight for a whole week right the average of how many calories you ate that uh that week as well that's basically your maintenance calorie calculator well that's basically your maintenance calories calculated so the basic premise of weight loss is like uh it's just thermodynamics so a pound of fat i'm pretty sure is about 3000 ish calories so if you wanted to lose a pound of fat per week that would mean that in that one week you have to eat 3,000 calories less than your maintenance calories for the week so that would be about a 400 calorie deficit now my weight's kind of been plateauing I think I'm overeating just a touch because I've really been doing about 20 Where are they? oh here we go I don't know what I'm doing right now. They, they're like closing down part of the road. No, I've really been doing more like 27, 2800 calories. So a little bit closer to my actual maintenance than I guess I would want to be at. You know, I should be getting a little bit lighter by way of actually hitting that 2500 calorie level. So as, so, or whatever. So in that whole week, if you want to lose body fat, 
you have to eat 3,000 calories below your maintenance. And if you have a whole week of good days, you know, fucking, you hit your 2,100 calories every day, but then that last day, you have 7,000 calories as like a, uh, a rebound, then it completely counteracts your whole week before, and you are just boned. You just boned yourself. Now, it's not going to say that you're not going to be able to get back on track, but if you consistently eat above your maintenance calories, then you know, there's no chance that the scale is going to move or your body fat percentage is going to go down. If you, uh, if you can understand what I'm trying to say. Oh, I'm totally screwed. This, uh, what is going on here right now? Uh, there's like a road closure. I'm trying to navigate around it. But, da -da -da. is it up? Where the fuck am I right now? Damn. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so, if you want to lose body fat, you have to be in a calorie deficit for a sustained period of time. No cheating, none of this bull crap, eating treats and not tracking it into your stupid simple macro tracker. You know, even just like if you raid the pantry a little bit, you grab a little handful of chips and you don't track it. If you do that 10 times in a day, which is not hard to do, then guess what, man? You can overshoot your calorie deficit easily, right? So you have to be kind of OCD about this shit if you actually want to know make progress I ooh, I find it very not amusing but interesting how little information people actually kind of have in their brain about how to you know lose body fat like <laughs> if you've ever seen like news debates where it's um, you know a reporter or whatever and they're doing an interview with someone and they're you know, they're going on about how, you know, exercise and calories do not determine the amount of body fat that someone gains or loses. It's not even a question, you know. And I'll tell you this before I cut to Kroger, because I do need to get a little bit of food. Once you actually get into tracking your macros and all this stuff, right, once you start tracking it and you actually can see that, you know, the amount and the types of foods that you eat will have a direct correlation with, you know, what your body is composed of in terms of fats, in terms of gaining protein, you know, muscle. You know, once you kind of, once you take the red pill, there's no going back. You're locked in. You know, no one that I have ever talked to, um, and I may be biased because I probably only talk to lifters, uh, but whatever. No one that I have ever talked to has started counting their macros done it for a consistent period of time, and then said, eh, this is stupid, eh, this is dumb, I don't want to do this anymore. That has never freaking happened in my experience. So, you know, oh, I don't really, I don't want to worry about what I eat, you know, I just want to, I just want to go to the gym, you know, I want to, maybe I'll have a protein shake every so often. That's the blue pill, man, you're staying in the matrix, you know. Just, uh, I just want you to think about that, right? You're Neo, and I'm Morpheus. I'm just, I'm just presenting you the opportunity to take a serious look into the real world. All right, enough of these Matrix references. Let's, uh, let's cut to Kroger and see what I'm going to eat for the next meal. All right, minor pit stop before Kroger. All right, yeah, there we go. So I actually kind of overestimated the amount of stuff that I need. <laughs> All I'm really getting is a couple of drinks. Uh, so I do love just kind of having a bunch of Sprite Zero in the fridge. Uh, purely due to the sake that I want to you know, drink like a sweet treat. But, and a little bit more of a food that has calories. I guess it's kind of stupid to even call it food, but I ran out of my little Carb Master chocolate milk. So I need some of that too. So that should be just about over here. I was kind of, <laughs> when, <laughs> when I went into the subway, there's two, two guys working, kind of a younger dude, and then sort of an older, grumpier looking guy. So the younger dude, he's the one who put the meat on my sandwich. And of course, 
you know, when I told him, like, I want some turkey and ham, I was like, all right, give me, like, a lot. <laughs> and when the older guy sort of looked over his work, he was pissed. Because, he, you know, like, he gave me too much. I would like to think that maybe the, uh, the little bit of meat poking out of the sleeves biased him to give me a little bit extra. I'm sure the same thing happens at Chipotle. If you look like you just came from the gym, I'm inclined to believe that if, uh, if the guy making your food is cool, he might give you a little extra something, something. So let's cut over to, I guess, the fucking Sprite. No need to make this one shot. I'll, I'll just jump between anything else I get. There we go. Now we're pulling into the soda aisle. I mean, there's nothing special about any of these diet sodas. I mean, they're all just, you know, sweetened with aspartame. I'm more inclined to believe that aspartame isn't doing so much damage to my insides as like, you know, something like sucralose. But I'm not going to say it's healthy for you. But in a dieting context, I haven't noticed any problems. So, a couple of two liters of a variety of flavors should hold me over for the next couple of days. Oh, I know, I, I need some more ground beef. All right, let's cut over to the, uh, the deli section for the butchery. All right, so this is really hardly even a grocery haul, more like just a grocery top off because I've got everything that I really want. All my low carb keto bread. I got some keto uh, tortillas too. Those are pretty good. Can't go wrong with a little bit of Old Bay. Uh, so yeah, all I really need to do is make sure I got some solid ass protein sources. So when it comes to the ground beef uh, in a bulking context, you know, I don't mind 80-20, but I've got no need for excess fats right now. So I'll always try to find the leanest kind of ground beef I can get my hands on. Two pounds and 96%. Perfect. So that's all I need here. Let's just cut to the kitchen for the Subway post-workout meal. So, you know, didn't really have to get well, I, actually, I guess that is more of a normal grocery trip. You don't go to the grocery store and get everything that you eat. You just kind of replenish the things that you need. So I've already entered these, well, this two cups of the Carb Master non-fat chocolate milk into the stupid simple macro tracker. And this little shaker cup has a nice little denomination to tell me when I hit 16 ounces, exactly two servings. So that's another 22 grams of protein. And protein from milk, you know, that's up there with beef, eggs, chickens, other dairy products, you know, whatever. It's up there, right? When I think of a dedicated protein source, I mean, I guess I'll just relist it again, right? Red meats, poultry, dairy, eggs, you know, Animal products in general are where it's at. So the vegan lifter may need to get his priorities straight. But this plus the sandwich puts me at about 21.73. Now there was a little bit of estimation because I mean, it's not like the subway guy added the exact same amount of like this and everything else, whatever. But, you know, the carbs from the vegetables on the sandwich, I pretty much just count as negligible. Uh, it's like maybe three. I just don't even worry about it. But the bread, I definitely have to worry about. You know, that's 80 grams of carbs right there. Uh, now, that's just something where, you know, I go online and I look up how many grams of carbs are there in a foot-long Italian loaf from Subway. Two little button clicks and then boom, the info is right there. You know, it's not too hard to find, but it is a little bit of a hassle to have to look this kind of stuff up. But, like I was saying in the car, the, once you get into it, it's just second nature. So, this will put me at 200 grams of protein for the day so far. 61 grams of fat. A little higher than I would have aimed for, but whatever. 
and then 207 grams of carbs. So I've got just about 350 grams, no, no, 350 calories left. So I've got about half a pound of a top round steak uh, in the sous vide right now, doing a little bit of a slow cook. So I'll probably come back down to the kitchen in about yeah, maybe like an hour. And then that'll be 50 grams of protein, probably, yeah, probably about 15 grams of, no, 50 grams of protein, 15 grams of fat. You know, I'll just give it a quick sear. Take my nightly, actually, no, what am I talking about? I take my vitamins in the morning. Shit. After that, I just get to go to bed. So let me think if anything else has been going on. Hmm. You know, Subway gets a lot of hate. I was just looking up the one in town on Google Maps, one and a half stars. You made the sandwich. I'm just, that's just a fucking classic joke. I don't know, man. I like it. I'm probably just nostalgic. Because when I was a kid, you know, my parents had us do the, uh, like, the swim team, like, summer league. So, nothing, like, hyper-competitive or anything. But, you know, you'd go out and have a whole swim meet where you just kind of hang out in the pool in your little camp. Walk around, you'd go do your little events. And, you know, this would be the classic snack that we'd have. is just a sandwich from Subway. <clears throat> so apart from like the uh, the steak and rice, which you would call a kind of conventional bodybuilding meal, you know, the rest of this is just, you know, it's just foods, right? Now I'm trying to be specific in my selection for the most part. That's why all the buns I have on top of the fridge are live carb, you know, like low carb keto buns. That's why all the tortillas I have in there are low carb. That's why I have the, uh, I'll just grab it for demonstrative purposes. That's why I've got the powdered peanut butter where once you reconstitute it with water or, you know, a classic move I've been doing is adding, uh, sugar-free syrup to get a little bit of a sweeter taste. You know, all these little, that's another thing, all the diet soda too, all these little replacements make it that much easier for me to stick to, you know, hitting just around what my macro goals are in the day. So if I can have a little uh, peanut butter and jelly sandwich on the keto bread with the powdered peanut butter with some sugar-free jelly, you know, I kind of just get to eat, you know, if you can kind of put in the effort, you can eat whatever you want. Now, there's a little bit of caveats to that because then you have to get into tracking everything. You've got to constantly been, be messing with the food scale. But, you know, I like this method the most out of anything. You know, I don't really just, it doesn't really appeal to me to do like prepped meals, have a bunch of them in the, in the fridge and like take them out every day and just eat it. Like, I don't know. I kind of want to eat, I don't know. I want to eat when I want to eat and I want to eat what I want to eat. And then under the constraints of these macros, you know, I'll adjust accordingly. So definitely the most intensively, uh, well, definitely the style of dieting that requires the most effort on my end, because I have to constantly be thinking about these things and tracking everything every day or every time I eat something, plugging it into the phone. But I mean, for me, it's the easiest. So if for you, you don't want to be messing with all these calculations, you don't want to constantly be like, oh, how many, how much of, like, if you want to just prep a bunch of meals, bodybuilder style, on Sunday, have them in the fridge. You know the pictures when there's like 20 little individual Tupperware containers of measured out chicken, measured out rice. Everything's added up perfectly. You don't even have to think about it. You just do your one, two, three, four, five, six meals, and then you go to bed. Hey, man. If that's your shit, then do it. You know, no matter what, there's no right or wrong way apart from a couple of constraints like you have to be in a calorie deficit to lose body fat and to gain weight you have to be in a calorie surplus but you know no matter what you do outside of those two realms whatever works for you works so 
figuring out some shit for yourself and it gets you results. That's just as valid as anything. So I'm going to sit here for a little while, play on my phone. Once I finish this, I'll go fold my laundry and then we can come back for the steak and this day will be complete. Final meal of the, ooh, I mean now technically morning. It's 12.30, man. I got to wake up tomorrow. It's just about eight-ish ounces of top round steak. So 50-ish grams of protein, 15 grams of fat. Ooh. A little bit of a gray band. Must have seared it a little too long on that side. But. That puts me at 2,508 calories. Uh, this is just a zero sugar lemonade that I have floating around. Well, not floating around, but you know, in the fridge. Mm. So, no macros to worry about there. Another benefit of all the zero calorie drinks and stuff like that. You don't even have to think about it. So, do you think I like having to do my cardio every day? Do you think I like tracking all my macros, you know, and going to the gym for like, you know, two hours at a time? Because I do. <laughs> Yes, I do. I uh, it kind of it kind of makes me. I feel a little bit weird when I see all the edits or all like these workout posts, and they're very negative. Like, you know, dudes are talking about their oh, like oh, you know, I used to be like this is kind of a classic trope. You know, it used to be maybe kind of a fatter kid, and it's like now you're working out. You want you want to get in shape, uh, kind of. Re, uh, reactively to how you were treated when you were younger, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Whatever sort of motivation you have to use to get jacked, I mean, that's badass. But for the most part, I try not to dwell on anything very negative in my training. Like, I just think it's sort of a flawed mentality, at least in terms of longevity, to, you know, want to achieve something to get over on somebody or like, oh fuck! Like you need to break up with somebody, whatever you want to get jacked. Oh, then now I'll show I'll show them. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. The I'll show them mentality. I'm not saying it won't work, but for the most part, if I try to think about why I'm doing all this stuff, I just like it. <laughs> I just freaking like it. So maybe there's something mad deep repressed in my mind which just isn't surfacing but just walking around being big moving a ton of weights all i see is positives you know so i'm super into it but you know whatever you gotta do it's not like i'm saying you're wrong but you gotta think i think you're just gonna have a better time in the gym if you think about Oh, let me let me see if I can even phrase how I want to say this. It's like thinking about the things that you want to achieve and not the things that you want to you know stop per se. Like do you want to do it just because or do you want to do it so that people won't mess with you anymore or this it's gonna, you get a little bit of the idea I'm talking about, you know. The more often you can just go to the gym, have a hard lift, and just be happy about it due to it, you know, for its own sake, I think that you're going to have a better time overall. You shouldn't really be doing anything for anybody else's approval anyway, you know? So, other than that little, quick little chat as a finisher. I'm going to keep up this level of caloric intake for probably hmm, maybe another three-ish weeks. I think we might hit day 60. Honestly, 60 is kind of coming to mind as the number where I think, okay, that's probably about time to call it. But, you know, I'll see. I'm definitely not going to cut it before 60. But 
you know, after that, we'll just get back on the bulk. I'm sure I'll give it some kind of title. I'm not going to call it Spring Bulk again, of course, but I do look forward to it. Because the way that I look at dieting, you know, and trimming down, uh, I just feel like I'm putting a... Uh, maybe not putting a pause on progress, but just... Well, I mean, kind of putting a pause on progress, you know? I like getting bigger, getting stronger, right? Seeing the weight move upwards, gaining muscle tissue, right? That's my favorite part. And even if I'm a little softer and I don't have all the crazy cuts, I think I definitely prefer bulking to cutting. But I like them both. So it's maybe 60% bulking, 40% cutting, right? You got to take each with the other one. Each with the other. You got to take one with the other if your deal is the bulking and cutting method, not just main gaining, hitting your protein and eating as much food as you're hungry for. If you do that and combine that with hard weight training, you are going to grow, grow muscle slowly over time for sure. It's just not the method that I'm really into currently. So, getting into a couple of interesting points here. I'm definitely feeling ready for bed. Tomorrow is going to be morning cardio. I'll set the alarm for like eh, probably 7.30 or so. I've been waking up before my alarm though. That's kind of cool. I guess the that's better than the alternative waking up after it. But then I got one class. I get to just come home and chill for a while before going to the gym later and hitting arms. So I don't know which gym I'll go to. I kind of like having a circulation, but no matter what gym I go to, the arm pump is going to be freaky. So, cut will come to an end, and the bulk will begin again. So, only bigger and better things to come. I'm out. I'll see you next time.